As of the filming of this fireside chat, I have a four-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a ten-year-old, and I am in the throes of fatherhood. And I feel the tension between wanting to create lasting memories and, and treasure each moment that I have with my children, and at the same time, flat out exhausted by trying to be a good, loving, godly father to my kids. And one of the resources that I use is a funny podcast called Dadville. And it's all about the art of being an awesome dad. And one of the things that I love about the podcast is that they interview all these different famous people who are, who are all dads and ask them about their experience as a child with their father and then how they approach guiding their children. And one of the things that they say at the end of each podcast is they ask the guest this question. What do you hope your children will say at your funeral about you? And you get so many wonderful answers and it really puts into perspective the brevity of life and the legacy that dads want to leave to their children. Let me ask you that same question. What do you hope your children and grandchildren will say about you at your funeral? Because the resume of virtue is your eulogy. Will people say that you were a loving and kind person? Will they say that you loved Jesus more than anything else and that you gave every waking moment for the glory of God? What will they say about you? Proverbs 22 verse 1 says, A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. You might leave a material inheritance to your family, but what is said at your funeral will be telling about the life that you chose to live. The resume of virtue is your eulogy. I've had the privilege of officiating a lot of funerals. And sometimes... I know the people really well, and I know that they were a follower of Jesus and lived for him. And I love those funerals. It's just a testimony of a life well lived. But sometimes I did funerals for people that I know did not know the Lord. And while I preached that same gospel message, I also looked with interest at how people talked about that person's life. And sometimes they would struggle to say any nice thing at all. Because not everyone lives a great life. But you have this one opportunity, this one little mist that appears for a little while and then disappears, this, this precious life that you have to give to God and to other people. And let me encourage you, live a life that bears the name of Jesus proudly and that you carry for yourself a reputation of integrity. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 1 says, A good name is better than fine perfume, and the day of death better than the day of birth. Now you might be saying right now, Justin, you don't know the life that I've lived. You don't know the mistakes that I've made. You don't know how badly people think about me when they hear my name. Let me tell you something. It is never too late to turn your life around. It is never too late to have a spiritual breakthrough in your life. It's never too late to confess what you've done, forsake the bad things that you've done, and commit yourself to a life in godliness. That's exactly what the Apostle Paul did. He spent his whole ministry proving to the world that he really did have faith in Christ and want to live for him, even to the point of death, to live is Christ, and to die is gain, as he said. Today, choose the person you want to be for the glory of Jesus.